vision of transformation and welcomes change and supports teachers to be change agents themselves uh -huh. and to um, value teachers when they come to the table ready to make a change that makes sense for kids with kids' best interests, to have that principal there to support and mm -hmm. help that teacher make that change, but mm -hmm. at the same time be a principal that, as an instructional leader, knows when it's not the right move for kids and it's not the right move for education and to be able to back that up and support the teacher to guide them in another direction. Uh -huh. That they can't do it alone, uh -huh. that it has to be shared leadership, mm -hmm. they have to have a team and to be able to be the one to take the heat, to be able to be the one to say I made the decision, be able to back it up with research, but share the wealth as well as take the pain and I think the coaching piece that we've been able to bring into place across the nation, but in Fargo, is huge and gives especially elementary principals who live their life in isolation, someone to bounce ideas off of, someone to share the um, importance of professional development and teacher support and to delegate some of those responsibilities and lead together. Three, four brains are better than one, and I think mm -hmm. when you work in isolation, what seems like a good idea, if you can't bounce it off someone else, or especially with the coaching, I think. Mm -hmm. Our coaches are fresh out of the classroom, still mm -hmm. have a foot in the classroom, and to get that other perception of, this sounds really great, but in a, when you break down that white picket fence, what's really happening out there, and to have that conversation about what I see as the instructional leader versus what you see as that teacher support piece. Uh. Well, first of all, I think standards should be thought of as your target, and it's a target that doesn't move, mm -hmm. and it's a guide, mm -hmm. and that's what you're shooting for, and I might get there today, you might get there tomorrow, somebody else might get there two weeks from now, and we'll get there all different ways because that's the art of teaching and the style the teacher brings to the classroom, but I think teachers' personalities generally are perfectionists and they want to do it right the first time, and they want to be able to do it all well. And you talk about that in your workshop to say, you know, when you have a bad lesson, just admit it and roll with it. And kids see you as real when you say, you know what, I'm not having fun doing this. It's not working. Mm -hmm. Ask them for help. And t they can be just as much a part of a team as we talked about with a coach and a principal. Uh -huh. Have those kids share that culture and share that climate of learning. And when it's not working, just admit it. Uh -huh. Try something else. You're saying that for more successful schools, we have to fail more. Every day. Yeah. Many times a day. I like that. Yeah. That's a good fail hard. I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just fail publicly. <laughs> <laughs> and she admits it publicly. I do. <laughs> What's the advantage of admitting publicly failures um, in, the, in terms of... Um, I think in every role. I'm a district office person, central office person, and uh -huh. I think for me to publicly admit that I made a mistake lets teachers know mistakes are okay mm -hmm. and that I'm only human. Mm -hmm. And for a classroom teacher to admit their mistake lets kids know no one's perfect. There is no such thing as perfection, and we all make mistakes. And some of the best lessons I've ever learned, I've learned because of a big mistake I've made. And it's really a lesson learned if I don't do it again the next time I'm in that situation. Very good. It also says, too, that... Um, when you make a mistake, there's more than one way to get there. So if you admit that there is a mistake, there are other ways to be able to do it. And I think that's really something that you guys have kind of put together. And that leads me back to our whole curriculum question of it's a framework. Standards are a framework. An adopted curriculum by a district is a framework, but it can look different in every one of our 275 classrooms. And the way they get there to that target, to that bullseye standard, looks different and it's the art, and sometimes there's road bumps along the way known as mistakes, mm -hmm. and it's okay. Building trust um, in our district, in our buildings, in our grade levels is huge. I, I think we've given them the venue through professional learning communities to have those conversations, but because we haven't built the trust or we're fear of failing or we're fear of someone looking down upon us, that we don't have those hard conversations. But the venue is there, we just have to build those bridges of trust.